Okay, a few hours later, the Glyptol is hardened and sealed, and this is these little trim rings. Um, most uh, electric components these days use Teflon rather than those ceramic beads that were sticking up. So these are little Teflon rings that have a slice in the side so you don't have to desolder those and you just pop these on. It kind of dresses it up as much as anything. A little extra protection for the yeah. terminal. You find the little slice that we made and and I just use these pop them on. Yeah, if I can get that one on. There. Okay, so this is all done and ready to install. Um, at this point, things start happening pretty fast. And you get a little bit more excited because you're starting to see this entire thing come together. Um, at this point, now that I've got some good light, I want to inspect down in here, make sure I got all of the all the old stuff out. It's just a little easier to use some good light to look in and inspect all of these parts. Alright, um, if you have, if you still have your boiler on your frame, um, you will install the heating element onto the, onto the boiler in the frame. And a lot of times, um, I choose to do this upside down, holding the frame between my knees. But in this case, since we had to take this off to remove the asbestos, um, we'll just install it on the bench. Um, just a few little points here. This had the asbestos covering on it, and that can hide a, a fairly common defect, a fairly common problem that uh, crops up in a lot of Olympia machines, and that's the presence of pinhole leaks. Um, I've seen various explanations of what causes pinholes. I think it has to do with a long period of water sitting in the machine. Uh, you always see them generally in this lower area right by the, where the heating element would be. It could have to do with uh, the heating and cooling, uh, the, the wear uh, of the metal. Um, but if you have a, a, a machine, whether it has asbestos or not, um, and if you look at the boiler and you see little puffs little white tufts of scale and a lot of times they say they'll be right around this area and if you if you see that on your boiler and you look either with your light down through or you take the bottom off is that you will find that the little white tufts the little spots of scale on the outside correspond to spots of scale on the inside and those are pinhole leaks in a way they're self-sealing. What happens is, is this tiny hole begins uh, to, to, to spit water, to push water. But when it pushes the water, it forms a, 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 a little bit of scale that has a tendency to plug the hole. And it, you get a machine, <coughs> excuse me, and you, you descale the machine as a matter of course and you remove the, the plug from the inside when you get rid of this, the scale and so it'll begin to seep again and uh, what you'll actually see is little bits of steam escaping and, and it has to to sit there and, and work for a while before it will reseal itself the, the, the way that once your boiler is cleaned and I don't see any on this machine on this boiler, but once the, the once it's clean, you can really look at it, and what you'll see is is instead of this this brass, you'll see a, a, a patch, a rough pop patch that just looks like copper. And once the, you've removed the scale from a pinhole, it's it's a small rough, uh, almost like a scar in, in the surface, 
and it'll have a small dot right in the center of it. It's almost like a spider bite or something like that. You know, that, that you'll, you'll see the, the, the aberration in the surface and there'll be a big just point right in the center and that's the hole. Um, the, the way that these are, are uh, repaired is quite simple if you do have a pinhole leaks and some of them can be quite extensive. We've seen some really ugly ones that have had pinholes up through in this area and um, it's basically you, you clean off the scale and abrade the surface you know once again with some steel wool or some a little piece of sandpaper and you make sure you've gotten it really clean and then once you have diagnosed all of these little spots you take a um, thread locker I use lock seal and the uh, this is commonly called Olympia Express refers to this as the blue stuff and uh, uh, so you take the blue stuff and you just put a little dot you know, you just you, you you either can use this, which a lot comes out, or you can take a toothpick and a little puddle of this, and you just dip 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 dip. You touch all these pinholes, and then you let it sit overnight. And the anaerobic sealant it gets down in the hole, and it completely cures the problem. It withstands pressure. Uh, it absolutely does cure it. Uh, you can also solder these things or braze them, but. Um, then what you end up with is you end up with a boiler with a whole bu bunch of warts all over it. It can be done in that manner, but it's more invasive. This Using this lock seal, it fixes the pinholes every time. And uh, as I said, no pinholes here, no problem here, but that is more common than you would think. You find a little white dot, a little puff of scale on the outside, just remove the scale, put your lock seal on it, and it's fixed. Okay, with that digression, <laughs> but, holes, but it is important. It, it's a, you know we've seen it. And we marvel over it. We say, "Wow, look at that!" And the machine is beautiful, and it has all these these, these warts. But it's fixable. Now, the uh, the heating element is going to go on. You, you the orientation. This is where the the thermal safety switch goes down in here. The thermal safety switch goes on the side that the steam wand goes on. Okay, all the electrical is going to be on this one side of the machine. So you orient it like this, and you your switch is going to go in this orientation. The steam one is going to be over here, and goes in this orientation. Now there's, we take our gasket, we slap it on there, work it upside down, I just hold it between my knees. Now, once again we say, where's the steam wand? It's over there. and. We go on in this orientation, just right like this. We line up the holes. It's a rubber, a rubber gasket. Now I did say we're going to upgrade to the stainless, stainless boiler bolts. Now, the early machines they didn't use washers. The later machines, you will find wa a set of washers that looks like if you've got the machine you're staring right at them they're brass they're not those they're thick uh, where's a good example of one of those washers I try to save everything but as you can see sometimes saving everything means it's hard to yeah, find yeah it pretty much it, it it looks like that uh, except it's, it's the original ones are brass there's one right there And they're not lock washers, they're just plain old little flat washers. And those are on the later ones. Uh, but on the early machines, for whatever reason, they didn't use washers. But, so, we take this, and we get these all started by hand. You kind of move it around to that gasket's going to kind of wiggle around and slide around and you you just find out where it went, there's where it went and then you get all of these started uh, of course I've got it all wacko there goes that one, once again these are five millimeter hexes is the tool that you use 
when you're working on the when you have the the boiler off like this um, you can actually do a little more direct job tightening these down but thankfully since they thought of everything at Olympia we'll discuss this in a second once I get the frame out here okay for this I use my five okay so we take this and we go snug and we snug it all around Snug in an X pattern, so you can get the the plate tightened evenly all around. And this is the nice part because it's it's clean. You're you're watching your espresso machine now getting more and more close to give those a pretty good pretty good torque that was my first one all around we're going to once this machine is up and heated we'll go through and we'll retighten all of these after a few heat cycles. Okay, now that this is ready to install in the frame. How's our time there, Barbara? We spent a lot of time talking 12 about minutes. 12 minutes? We spent a lot of time talking about pinholes. So we're going to have to stop for a second, start a new, start the clock running again. We'll have this on the frame. Uh, it's getting a little late here, but I do want to get this on the frame because, you know, the, your level of excitement and motivation begins to to increase and so you say well let's get this done but we'll be back and put this on the frame and see